Franchising is the most misunderstood and most overlooked form of entrepreneurship. We're here to educate you and help you find the entrepreneur within. Franchising is not all about the French fries. We find that individuals who are exploring business ownership tend to have a lot of misperceptions and misunderstandings about the franchise industry. So what we want to do is help prospective business owners make confident and educated decisions before moving forward or not moving forward with the business. Welcome to Unpredicted Entrepreneur. Hey, welcome to episode 34 of Unpredicted Entrepreneur. I'm Roxanne Rapsky, and this is my colleague, Sarah Wasco. We created this podcast to bring you education and information about business ownership and all things franchising. Today, we have a very special guest. We are going to be honoring veterans in this episode. So with us today is Paul Huzar. He served 23 years active duty in the Army, he's a retired lieutenant colonel, and he doesn't want me to go through all of his accolades, so I'm going to say that he's got quite a few military awards and decorations. I will leave it at that. And Paul, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, ladies. Thanks so much for having me, and more importantly, Thanks so much for taking on this incredibly important topic that I'm so passionate about, uh, particularly in, uh, in and around Veterans Day. I appreciate you. So let's start out with, I'm going to want to hear um, a little bit about how you got into franchising, but I wanted to bring this up at the beginning of our episode because veterans make up only 7% of our population, but they account for 14% of all franchisees in America. And they're more likely to hire other veterans and spread the opportunity, prosperity, and job creation that has made franchising one of the fastest growing sectors in the US economy. So I know you're very passionate about bringing veterans to business ownership and franchising. So why don't you tell us how you came into franchising and we'll get started there. Sure. It, I mean, it's a complete accident, to be honest. Um, but now I'm I'm in the place I was meant to be. You, I, I, I just want to interrupt. We, I can't tell you how many people tell us they got into franchising by accident. It's so interesting. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but I just think that just is funny to me. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So I, I retired and moved to Tampa um, for a number of reasons. It was the place I wanted to live for quality of life for me and my family. And then, frankly, I struggled finding an opportunity. And I went probably six months or so trying to find a career opportunity. And what I realized during that time is that people didn't know me. They didn't know who I was as a, you know, all those things that you just said. And more importantly, they, they didn't know who most veterans were. And I have a whole presentation on that. I won't dwell on that. But it struck me as kind of significantly unfortunate um, for our society and particularly for veterans as they're transitioning. And I spent a lot of time trying to understand the why. And in that time, I got connected. I would start networking and I got connected with a gentleman named David Howard. Uh, David was the first C-suite level guy um, that knew what my resume meant because David had been an army officer for five years and then had spent about 25 in the insurance industry and had gotten hired to run a company that did forensics engineering, um, mostly for insurance carrier clients. So David got my resume because of my networking and because I'm a licensed professional engineer, retired Army Corps of Engineers officer. And I, he called me in for an interview. I thought I was interviewing for an engineering management position with this company. And he starts to tell me about how they had just launched VetCorps on Veterans Day 2013. This was a week after Veterans Day that year and how they were trying to vertically integrate other service offerings um, for these great insurance carrier clients that they had who no longer needed their primary um, service that they offered, which is really cause and origin loss investigations for sinkholes. A big deal here in the Tampa Bay area, um, but had become less of a big deal because of some legislation that had mitigated the ability for um, consumers to file fraudulent claims and therefore have um, forensics engineers determine cause and origin loss. So 
uh, he, he knew the insurance industry. So he said, Hey, I'm going to create this company, water damage mitigation. You both know that that's a huge industry, um, and growing and it's resilient, it's recession proof, all these things. And we service the same insurance carrier clients that they were to baby, basically vertically integrate other service offerings to these clients that they had. And David's idea was called to call it vet core. So we would hire veterans who show up fit, polite, on time, treat people with dignity and respect, and basically be a, a differentiator for that brand in an industry that, and particularly in Florida, was struggling. And so he said, uh, he knew what my resume was and my capability was kind of manning, training, equipping as a senior military officer. He said, I want you to be the president of Vet Corps. Wow. Quite the job. I said, yeah, yeah. Sure. The president of one. <laughs> and, and away we went. That's, that's and awesome. And then, you know, um, we built the company. We expanded it uh, twice uh, over the course of uh, the next two years. I had the crazy opportunity to become the owner. David had a partner in, involved. His, his partner no longer wanted to participate. So I became the majority owner. David was still running his company. In fact, now he's, he's the CEO of a property and casualty insurance company here in Florida. And, uh, and then as we moved along, it, I really wanted to create opportunities for vets, but I realized and I studied the franchising model. I went to the IFA conference two years running before we even entered into the franchising venture. And I met a ton of folks and um, I said, man, if I could create a franchise model, you know, there's several advantages to that. One, in my opinion, franchising is all about training, standardizing, and replicating. Mm -hmm. You know any institutions <laughs> that have good reputations for training, standardizing, and replicating? Mm. And, and that plays to our to our strong suits, right? Right. But then not only could we help um, more junior veterans who are transitioning and looking for technician jobs or perhaps like mid-grade non-commissioned officers looking for middle manager jobs, but we could help people like me who didn't know what the heck they wanted to do when they got out and grow up and become business owners and only in turn hire more veterans and, and kind of jump on the bandwagon in our cause. So away we went in 2019, six months before COVID, by the mm -hmm. way. And uh, and here we are today with 15 franchises and um, and, and expanding and and just about all of them are, are going to work right now, helping others for Hurricane Ian as we speak. So I know that you have a secret agenda and I want you to, you know, kind of give us some more on that. But I think it's, I shared with you that for quite a few years, a number of years, I worked very closely with a group that um, worked with veterans that were junior and senior officers that were transitioning out of the military. And I feel like that's a really hard jump to go from the military. I mean, it's hard enough to jump from leaving that environment and getting out and becoming a civilian and going into corporate America, I think it's an even bigger jump to go straight into something that, you know, everything's been so sure for so long as far as housing and, and pay to go into becoming a business owner where everything is unsure. So how does one make that leap, Paul? Well, you know, it's interesting. In many ways, you are so very accurate. Um, but in many ways, that's what we've been doing all of our careers is dealing with ambiguity, solving problems, creating order out of chaos. Uh, and, and oftentimes, those, all those things, I call them the recipes for success, the, the tools, the knowledge, skills, abilities that the military has blessed us with. Oftentimes, we as veterans don't even understand what those capabilities are and how we can transition those to the civilian world and, and to become a business owner or, for that matter, any role in the civilian world. So that's one of the things I try and do is help veterans understand that. I, I tell them how I put some of those things to use. And it, it's one of the things, my, my secret agenda, uh, our secret sauce, you know, shh, don't tell anybody. We hire <laughs> veterans because they're great teammates. You should try it too. And, you know, just hire one and, and see what you get and support them. And the next thing you know, you'll be duly impressed with what they can do. But they need some, they need some structure and support. And, and oftentimes then when they make that leap, you know, it's much different culture norms and values, um, than they're used to not right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and 
you know, what we try to do is replicate those cultures, norms, and values of the military so they're comfortable here. Um, and, and, and then other companies can do that as well. And then they'll see all of the things that are offered by veterans, their problem-solving ability. And, and I'm not talking about just, um, you know, dedication to duty and their values. Because, frankly, now that I'm the CEO of a company, um, if I'm intellectually honest with you, I don't think that people hire based on values. I think they'll fire based on the lack of values. Mm. They'll, they're typically hiring based on, you know, what's on your resume and, and everything. And that's where the veterans are handicapped because one, we use a completely different vernacular vocabulary and then our credentials don't transition well. There's a whole presentation I talk about um, from my experience as the Dean of the Army Engineer School in my last assignment where I tried to help solve that problem. I couldn't. Um, so there's all those kinds of challenges. But then what you do get is all these really cool things that they learn. And we're right in the middle of it right now um, with Hurricane Ian. This is the seventh year in a row where we've responded to a major hurricane, at least one per year. And each time we've done it, we do an after action review. What happened? Why did it happen? How we can improve? So imagine what happens when you get successively better and you analyze yourself. It's just one of the example, one of the things that you get when you hire a veteran. We're just wired that way. So you've got how many claims right now in Florida? <laughs> 3,000. And you have 15 franchisees? So how's that working well, out? We have, yeah, we have 15 franchisees. We have six in Florida. And then essentially what we've done um, is our six franchisees are, are uh, mobilized. So they're doing water claims in their own territories. Many of them have also, though, mobilized through temporary labor, white vehicles, temporary staffing agencies, contingency plans that we're used to doing as in the military. We've made ourselves bigger than what we are. There's a whole doctrine called RSOI, Reception, Staging, Onward Movement, Integration. If we were deploying into an immature theater of operations and how we build combat power, we've put the, the, all those things to work. And so now we have... Um, among several subcontractors in our six franchisees, we have 90 roof tarp teams and 10 uh, tree removal teams doing roof tarping and tree removal throughout the West Coast wow. of Florida. In addition to each one of our franchisees maxed out doing their water damage mitigation and roof tarping in their own territories. So if anybody wants to know if a recession res uh, or if a damage restoration franchise is recession resistant, how would you answer that, <laughs> Paul? <laughs> uh, yeah, we are um, recession proof and, you know, pandemic proof. That's that's proven. Uh, we're an essential home service. And when people think of disaster restoration, they think of this example like right now with Hurricane Ian. But what we do on a daily basis mm -hmm. is dishwashers, ice makers, hot water heaters, air conditioning units, roof leaks, kitchen fires, yep. all those types of things that happen routinely all the time. But the challenge, and those are those are emergencies. Yep. You know, if that happens in your house, it's just as much of an emergency as, you know, a Hurricane Ian for affecting a thousand people or thousands of people, hundreds of thousands, right? And, and you need help. And oftentimes it's the only time you've had to deal with this in your life. And it's another thing, another reason why I think our brand resonates with them, because the American people trust veterans. We have that reputation of service and helping others and, and you know, in a recession proof environment, because those types of things happen all the time around the U.S. You know, in, in the in the you know, mid Atlantic, it's freeze and thaw of pipes because the you know, building standards are different uh, up north. It's obviously freeze and thaw in the winter, significant freezes. Um, we had the Texas winter storms uh, a couple of years ago. We've got hurricanes, tornadoes. And when those events happen, we're really able to put our skills and our experience to work. I, I, I would tell um, insurance carrier leadership, uh, you know, I, I think you're asking us what's our capability to deploy to a remote location under austere conditions, establish operations and command and control those operations. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And, you know, it just speaks to the value of a franchise system, too, because there are all these franchisees able to kind of come together and serve 
um, those in need in your particular, um, you know, situation with, with the damage restoration. So, you know, we always say that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So you have your colleagues, the other franchisees, the franchisor support system, and you can all kind of work together um, in whatever situation might require that. Well, and something else I wanted to share for any, you know, veterans that are going to be listening to this or active duty for that matter. We had a veteran that we placed that, you know, was very unsure of who would have his back in the civilian life. And when he turned to franchising, he said he felt like the franchisor um, reminded him of the role of his commanding officer and that he felt unit cohesion with the other franchisees and then he knew who had his back and it was a comfortable place for him. Yeah, and you know, the funny thing is the the stigma associated with military is, you know, we've got this autocratic leadership style, you know, do this, follow this order, et cetera. The truth is it couldn't be farther from that, right? We're the best, the U.S. has the best military ever in the world because of the initiative of the small unit leader and because we work on intent-based missions. It's called mission type orders. We provide task and purpose, all right? And, and there's five components to a standard mission statement. Who, what, where, when, and why. And, but, but you watch movies and you see, you know, the, the portrayal of some big colonel out there barking out orders or whatever. And so that stigma has been applied to us. And because, you know, we're only 7% of the population, the other 93, and it declining, by the way, yeah. yes. the other 93% haven't served. And the, the smaller we get, the fewer and fewer people who have neighbors, cousins, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters who've been in the military. So they still revere us. They honor us. They thank us for our service. They just don't know us. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so these stigmas tend to kind of just perpetuate over time. But the reality is they're phenomenal at running with intent and, and making stuff better. So while they make great franchisees because there's a, an SOP to follow, they make gr really great franchisees because not only do they follow those SOPs, they make them better and they contribute mm -hmm. and to, they talk to the, their friends on their left and their right. And they say, hey, this is what I just did. And we tweak it and we're continually improving. I love that. That's the best description I've heard of why franchise, why veterans make good yeah. franchisees. So um, tell us about, on that subject, a program was created called VetFran. Um, can you share a little bit about that program and how that works with our listeners? Sure. It, it's absolutely awesome. I'm a huge fan. Unfortunately, we're not members yet because you have to be uh, um, um, in franchising for three years. Our first franchisee will hit his three-year mark here in another uh, month and a half, and then we'll be members. Awesome. But I'm, I'm familiar with it. I'm a huge fan. And essentially what it does is for franchisors who give certain incentives. So it, it includes you know discounts for veterans um, off their franchise fees and things like that. And, and it's encouraging franchisors in the IFA, the International Franchise Association, to join this committee, which basically incentivizes and promotes um, veterans to become franchisees. And it's a great program. Um, they have their own website, they have their own uh, directory, and they each one offers, will, will show what the veteran discount is off the franchise fee, et cetera. They have certain levels based on that discount, based on the number of, um, the proportion of franchise uh, franchisees who are veterans and things. And it's really IFA's way of helping honor our veterans and encouraging them to become franchisees and enter the franchise industry. And the program's been around for over 30 years, right? Yeah, and and it's you know completely volunteer organization composed of franchisors. Um, you know, it's rotating. They have a board and they have leadership, um, and so they've done all kinds of new. Um, new issues, new incentives. You know, they've revamped their website recently. Uh, just tr tremendous opportunities for veterans to learn, understand. It's a great place to start um, and to help, you know, and I think even, you know, consultants use that to help steer veterans in, in those directions for really veteran-friendly um, franchises. What is your 
what is your goal as far as, you know, you're, you've got this agenda, you want to see more veterans in franchising. Do you have a goal set? So our vision is to become the brand known for timely, quality, reliable service, and the value of veterans, and the premier private employer of veterans throughout the United States. So we'll, we'll never match the federal government in terms of employing veterans in, in the VA and the Department of Defense. Uh, so, um, but I, I want to grow a franchise system. And I, I tell people, close your eyes and imagine a major hurricane it just hit the Gulf Coast or a major hurricane hitting the eastern seaboard and ask yourself, whether you're an insurance executive or you're a homeowner, who would you rather have respond to that? And, and by the way, we're, you know, we're not exclusively veteran owned and veteran operated. Our policy is veterans and those who share similar values, but we certainly want um, potential franchisees who want to hire veterans and uphold this type of brand. But imagine that network of former military professionals, veterans, and those who share similar values that have the ability to respond and come to your assistance in your time of need. Um, I, I think we just have huge potential to expand that um, and, and do great things for our country, for ourselves, and building you know, generational wealth as well. Mm-hmm. And why shouldn't veterans be able to do that? Um, and then you know, when, when you think about that, um, I just think that that fundamentally is what drives me. And if we can get to that, we will be a profitable business. We will grow our business. Um, we will exceed our goals, but we stick to our goals and our mission um, fundamentally um, based on that vision. So what does it take to be a VetCorp franchise owner? Like what kind of, there's hard skills and soft skills. So what are you looking for when you're looking at a franchisee that's a, a candidate? Uh, so that's a trick question. That's not actually not a trick question. <laughs> you all know, um, you all know Mike Long, who is my VP of uh, franchise development. He found this uh, graphic and I'll just, I'll show it to you. Um, and then I'll read it to you because you probably can't see it. So here's the ideal franchisee lives at the intersection of these four things. What you love doing what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. Mm. If VetCore as an opportunity provides those four things to you, then that's what we call the sweet spot. And, and we can train all the rest of the stuff. And so, you know, what do you love doing? You, you don't have to love doing restoration, um, but you have to love helping others. You have to love building and leading teams. You have to love representing the value of veterans. You know, what does the world need? Well, c- clearly, even in a, it's a recession-proof, pandemic-proof environment, this is not going to go away. It's not going to be replaced by AI or robotics or something else. The world's going to continue to need these types of services. And I believe we're going to expand our service offerings for simple things that people need and can't do or don't want to do themselves that, that we're really good at in commanding and controlling small unit-level operations. What you can be paid for, the American dream is still to own a home. Right. And most people can't afford to buy it outright. So they have to have insurance. And most insurance policies cover just about everything that we do. And so you can be reliably played for it by an insurance company that has great credit ratings and deep pockets. And that's why we have these um, over now 60 insurance companies that we partner with and, and 11 TPAs, third party administrators who act on behalf of insurance companies. And then, you know, what are you good at? Again, you don't have to be good at restoration. And you guys know this as, as um, franchise business coaches, right? You may love being uh, working out. Don't buy a gym, right? <laughs> Don't because you're, you're, the, you're the business owner. Yeah. You're not the personal trainer, yes. right? So I don't, I don't want you to, be, to love and be good at restoration. What I want you to be good at is forming teams, leading and managing teams, um, representing your company and talking to insurance agents and and facility managers and apartment managers so you can go out and get business. I want you to be good at representing the value of veterans, those types of things. We'll teach you and your team. That's the essence of franchising, the training piece. So that's what we look for. And, And if those four things exist in a potential franchisee, then we know we may have a fit. 
And that's when, you know, we bring them to discovery day and say, are we the, the, the right fit, the optimal fit for you? And of course, I mean, there, there's the practical things of, you, you know, you've got to have the, the financing available and all that kind of stuff. But we walk through that with the franchisee to explore all those issues. That was a really great summary of how to evaluate franchisees. Um, it is mutual exploration, which is what we talk with our clients about pretty regularly while they're um, learning about you, you're learning about them, and you use the word that we use all the time. It is about finding a fit. Um, but I love that um, graphic and those four things that you highlighted. Really, really important. We Really appreciate you joining us today, Paul. It has been a pleasure. If somebody wanted to visit with you further, how would they uh, get in contact with you? Sure. I mean, connect with me online. Um, I'm a a social media hound. I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, You know, LinkedIn is probably best. My email P who's our H U S Z A R at vetcore V E T C O R services.com. Our website's vetcore services.com or vetcore franchising.com. And that's an open invitation to any veteran, veteran family member, or a veteran advocate. Um, you, you know, our mission is, is to help. And we believe if we help enough, enough people and we do that genuinely and sincerely, we're going to find the right fits and, in our, in our, for our, for our future franchisees. So happy to do that in any of those methods and modes, um, anytime. And, uh, and I really appreciate you ladies, um, considering this topic so important and and hosting me on this, on this webinar. Well, before we go, I just want to say thank you for joining us today and thank you for your service and thank you for all you're doing for veterans. Absolutely. Um, We know you're extremely busy, and so we really appreciate you taking time out to join us today. Um, My name again is Sarah Wasco, and this is my colleague Roxanne Rapsky. If you would like to connect with us, please uh, find us on LinkedIn. We're both very active. Um, Again, my last name is W-A-S-K-O-W, first name S-A-R-A, Roxanne, uh, R-O-X-A-N-N-E, Rapsky, R-A-P-S-K-E, that we're very active on LinkedIn. So that's the best place to find us. You can also find us on friendnet.com and our YouTube channel, Friendnet of Dallas, Fort Worth, and Oklahoma. And lastly, wherever you get your podcast, if you would like to listen to additional episodes, you can download Unpredicted Entrepreneur on any podcast platform. So thanks for joining us today, and we will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.